Hello there, fellow nerds. Another Allies of Thunder Junction box opening. Thought I'd get this one out of the way as well. I'm gonna have a video for my top cards to brew with from Thunder Junction. I'm gonna make a promise. I am going to brew a deck with all of the cards on that list. I'm gonna play them on Arena and they're gonna come out in <laughs> decent time before the set isn't that old. And we'll get back to the good old Rogue Deck Builder days of actually brewing decks. They'll probably just be on Arena and Standard. I don't want to even try Magic Gathering Online. I don't think I have it un installed anymore on my computer. So, unfortunately, probably not going to go into, like, Pioneer or anything until they start supporting it on Arena. So, I will be miserable trying to brew decks on Arena and playing it on Arena on that trash client. But I think it'll be fun to get back to the old school days of Rogue Deck Builder and showcase some cards. And maybe I don't have to care too much about decks actually being viable. Just have fun playing with wonky decks like the good old days. However, we are going to continue our discussion on Allies of Thunder Junction League. So there's another way to play League. As my last video, I talked about how you can do a pre-release League or a constructed League uh, or one versus one League. Uh, by using a pre-release pack and building a 60-card a deck and playing it throughout the course of like six weeks, and your deck gets progressively better. And some people ask some questions on how we actually run that. It's very casual. The only rules are you get a pack per week. You can buy a pack to upgrade your deck per week. And then it depends on the league. Sometimes we do what's called a turbo league, where it's every loss you can buy a pack to add to your league. Sometimes we do two. The traditional way of doing it is every three losses you can buy a pack to add to your league. And you can only play the same person one time per week. So on Wednesdays, it resets. And then you can play Dave again. So if you played Dave on uh, last week, it, then the next Wednesday rolls around, it resets, and you can play it again. And we do things like once you get up to like 10 points or something, we give you a promo. And it's very casual. People ask about in the comment section about, well, how do you keep people from trying to, you know, cheese their deck by adding cards into the, the, the they didn't pull Cheaters are going to cheat. It's supposed to be casual. That's why we don't have like heavy prize support for things. I think what we typically do is the winner of the league gets the, a free entry into the next league. But if you're a store owner too, I highly, highly encourage you to, to run leagues. You'll be surprised at how many packs it sells where people actually want to buy packs for their league be, uh, and otherwise wouldn't even buy packs. So it actually gets people spending money and you got to kind of think it is like a loss leader. Like sometimes we do like pre-lease packs at cost. For this league here that you're seeing in front of you, this is Commander League and we run it very similarly. So Commander League is you, you can buy or you can open up a play booster or split a play booster. We allow you to split a play booster with someone because typically when you open up a commander in here, someone can take like the Golgari cards and someone can take the um, like is it cards and you can split a play booster and there'll still be enough cards for people to work with. And this one is essentially you just open up a play booster, you pick a commander, you build a hundred card commander deck and you play it just like you would in commander. So the title's video is the, the only way to play this trash format. I don't like commander. Let's just, I like to brew in commander. I like to theory craft in commander, but when it comes time to actually play in commander, I find it to be the most miserable experience ever because there's two extremes. Either it's ultra casual and you're kind of pitted to, to try to be nice and play nice and be this ultra casual, like friendly experience, or it's hyper competitive. And at that point, the cards, the power level of the cards are just insane. And you have a lot of infinite combos and turn three, turn four wins, things like that. And I just don't find that enjoyable to sit down, try to get a game. And it's just like, uh, again, someone just goes off or you have someone playing like taxes or, or stacks or something. And it's just, it ends up just being kind of, ugh. And nowadays, if you want to try, try to build decks in constructed commander, like anything, you have a lot of staples. It feels like you have to use now. Every deck has the one ring. Every deck has um like teferi's protection if you're in white or cyclonic grift you're in blue or you know you have you have your mana rocks you have to run for all of them to accelerate your mana and it's just i just found the commander the pool of commanders become too large and in fact with if you look at like recent sets too as i talked about like this one with thunder junction there are now like isn't this like the seventh set in a row that has now had like a four mana green card that just goes and ramps for two lands? And so it's not a singleton format anymore. Like all they're doing is renaming cards. And, and so you have your four or five copies of, of your, your rampant growth type cards. And it just doesn't feel like it used to with Commander. So to keep things fresh, to have things fun, Commander League, I think, is a great way to not only play Commander like it used to be, the good old days of not having access to a, a card pool that was so massive where you can just, you know, get these wombo combos. Um, and you get to, to, to really, really experience the mechanics from Thunder Junction. And the, the caveat on top of, of everything is it makes you actually play with bad cards. So like I said, you're only playing with what's in the play booster. So typically speaking, depends on the set. I'll have to give this one a, a try to see if there's enough playables. 
But in, in sets of the past, we've been like, okay, so every every color under three, you can use an additional copy of a card. So if you're playing a one color uh, deck, you can play three copies of a card. If you're playing a two color deck, you can run two copies of a card. But then if you're into three colors, there should be enough cards in here uh, to play with those, you know, the cards from your, your commander's identity. And it's, it's this is super, super fun way to play. It makes you be creative with the, what you actually put in your deck. It actually helps you learn the curve and actually threat assessment and you know there are some cards in here that might be like high cost removal spells but they're actually very relevant in this type of format because you specifically need to deal with specific threats that are bombs in this format and they would never see the light of day even in draft and i it, i think my favorite league we ever did was from strixhaven where i got extus and extus made a lot of terrible reanimation like return cards back from your your graveyard to your hand it made them so like amazing in there because of the synergy and the way you had to grind out your opponents and and you know and there was a lot of fun little uh, decks that people came up with uh, from their commander leagues and those those card combinations and those kind of synergies and the experience of of really utilizing the mechanics from the set would never happen in a regular commander environment. You are not going to find that sweet spot uh, to where. You know, people can not be so casual. They can, you know, build as to their heart's desire of competitive as possible what they get. And you still get to experience all these card combinations and, and fun things that would never, ever, ever happen. And what's kind of sad, too, is I think design has knocked out of the park with some really cool design cards that just aren't good enough for Commander now. That's the, that's the truth of it. They're just not good enough to throw in Commander decks. And they are definitely, definitely too clunky in Standard. Standard is a turn four format now. There are a lot of cards that are liabilities that are turn that are like four or five drops, especially creatures that don't have immediate effect, like ETB effects on the battlefield, you know, they have to compete with the Shieldreds of the world. And it's it's really, really rough for those type of cards to have any chance. I'm really looking at like March Machines. There were so many awesome cards that were printed out of that that set. They have no chance of ever seeing the light of day in like a standard environment. And, and again, are just too weak. Or, and, or if, if you are playing in a commander, it's like you're, you're playing it and then the traditional commander pieces that everyone's playing in their decks. And, you know, like I said, commander's been stale in my opinion. Okay, so now that we have people complaining, oh, Kevin, you have seven minutes of, of looking in a box. Just get to the pack openings. This is not a pack opening channel, my dears. This is a, a Kevin rants about things and talks about his experience channel. So if you're looking for people to mindlessly open up booster boxes, then, you know, go to whatnot and see that all day long of the, the snooze fest of open up Magic Gathering products. Anyway, enough insults aside, let's actually open this up and see what I get. And I'll, I'll give you my initial thoughts. And maybe we'll have a part two of this video of what I ended up deciding to play. Uh, we we're going to try to play tonight because tonight's Commander Night. But I tried to get people. I got like a couple of people interested in playing it. But then we I just get so much pushback by everyone else. I want to play my regular commanders. So whatever. We'll probably do this on Wednesdays for League Night, kind of rotate between playing Constructed, one versus one, and then bust out some Commander uh, uh, commander games. So Wednesday will is going to be really fun here at Gonro Games. We're going to play the, the the League of, like I said, the 60-card the deck, and then if we get enough people and, and, you know, fun times, maybe we'll cook some pizza and we'll play some, uh, some regular uh, good old League Commander. Again, that's the, kind of the rules for Commander. Oh, another thing you can do to spice up Commander, what I'm thinking about doing is opening up one of all the Commander decks. And that will be once you get up to 10 points. So you're going to get... We have a point system in um, the Commander League is if the, the first person that, that loses gets three lost points, and that equals a pack they can add. And then if you're the second person knocked out, you get two lost points. If you're the last person knocked out, you get one lost point. If you win, you get three points. If you took second, you get two points. If you uh, took third, you get one point. And those points are cashed once you get up to 10, then you get a random uh, or semi-random. We'll, we'll have to, sometimes we let people pick, sometimes it's been semi-random of a card that was um, out of the commander decks because then that adds some of the commander cards to the pool um, that are kind of fun to experience in this league. So anyway, now we're into almost 10 minutes of Kevin not even opening up a pack. Jeez, I can already I can already hear the the comments, the clicking on the <laughs> on the uh, the YouTube comments. So anyway, here we go. All right, so haven't even really looked at the full set. Like I said, I need to get to a, a top 10 cards that I want to brew in this set, and we'll get to it. I'm sure I'll be a little bit slow. So this can be fun with like Journey to Nowhere. This is a super playable card in Commander, especially Commander League, because it's going to be very relevant. So I'm liking this Commander. Maybe we'll start just put him out and might as well sort while I'm doing this. So white, blue, black. 
And we'll put up here. So we'll see where I'm sorting, but anyway, they'll be up there. So we have the High Noon, uh, which is an Aboros color combination. And I mean, it's fine for making people only cast one spell per turn. Uh, we have the Intrepid Stable Stable Master. So all these, this is a, this is a good, uh, um, this is exactly what I'm talking about. This just isn't good enough or a 2 2 to add one green man to your mana pool um, to play in like commander. You'd really have like a, you can add two if you get mounts or vehicles. So it's like not that relevant. There's already cards that can do this very easily um, in other, you know, sets especially commander specific sets sets that have been printed but in this set this is going to be awesome this is a mana dork with reach 2-2 bear and it can also ramp out vehicles so loving that card absolutely loving that card it's going to be you know something that's that's going to be fun to play with and again this, it shows you like the experience of commander league of how how you get to experience other different uh cards that you would never would so we have the red rock sentinel so these ones are actually pretty good too, to sacrifice a land to draw a card and create a treasure token. Again, one of the things that can happen with board states in this Commander League is they can get kind of stuck because you don't have Cyclonic Rifts and board wipes and things like that. This is a way to eke out some value. You know, you get land flooded, you start sacking, getting treasure tokens, and, and hopefully can find some stuff to break the board states. We have the Rattleback Apothecary. So a Death Touch 3-2, you commit a crime, it gets Medicine Lifelink. These type of cards are kind of meh in Commander because they, they don't... I mean, Death Touch is fine, though. Like, Death Touch in Commander League is actually pretty good because it's such a deterrent. Remember the good old days of when people used to run, like, Wall of Ice in Commander? Or Wall of Frost? Was it Wall of Frost, the one that's like, oh, it doesn't untap? Man, Commander has just evolved so much back to the... Like, I, 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 I'm a boomer here talking about how the boomer days of, of Commander. But you Zoomers, you guys are missing out when Commander was really dumbed down with the power level. And people ran things like Wall of Frost... And it was, I mean, Wall Frost was like a dollar card clear back then because it was going in so many commander decks. And I think that's the card I'm thinking about that just makes it so they don't untap if they, you know, you block with that creature. And there are so many cards like that. They act as kind of these, these deterrents from people attacking into you. And like I said, the power level now of the uh, cards in the commander pool is just insanely high that you don't even, even think, you know, of, of running cards like that. The Sphinx. So Flying Vigilance Ward 2. Hey. So you get some surveil action might be good too uh, for a reanimation. And we got the Lone Shark with the good old plot and drawing some cards. Like these are okay. Like again, though, this is is pretty pretty sweet if you could actually come up with some some synergies and value for these type of cards. The Skullduggery. This is actually kind of cool in Commander because of the multiple targets. So you're gonna you can uh oh I guess you have to give a creature you control plus one plus one. Okay, I thought you could give any creature plus one plus one, but nope. We have a Vengeful Townsfolk. Um, can get big in commander and board states, not too shabby. We have the, the Araskable Wolverine just allows for some value in here and the good old plus one, one counters might matter. And we got a good old wingsmith and we'll start going through this a little bit quicker and I'll start showing of, of what I'm kind of thinking about. So hopefully we find some, first of all, I'll set aside like the cards that I think are going to be very commander playable, like as the commander so far, of course we have not, um, got one. And we got the Fierce Retribution by destroying an attacking creature. Uh, or the Cleave is actually pretty decent here. We have our first little aftermath uh, mythic here, the Legion Intruder. Can deal two damage to anything when it enters the battlefield. And he can sacrifice another artifact to create a 3 3. So it's another value engine that can start grinding things out. Pretty sweet as a sack outlet, too. We've got the Inspiring Vantage. Nice little. I'll land there. All right, so the first commander we can play with. So let's analyze this one. This is Rico of Many Paths. So whenever you cast a, a, a model spell, choose up to, to X, where X the number of times you you chose a mode, uh, a modal spell, sorry. Uh, so anything with modes. Uh, choose up where X is the number of times you chose a mode for that spell. You X the top of car, card of your library. You can play it. Uh, put a plus one counter on Riku so Riku can start being commander damage. Uh, or you can create a 1-1 one, one bird. So I actually really, really like this card with a lot of synergies. This is a card right here that I'm looking for in League because it makes bad cards good. So anything with a mode starts to... Um, be valuable because you're going to get some value out of that. So really like this one. I think we'll have a lot of good targets. It's in three colors, so it allows me to... And it's in the color combinations that I really do like. You know, I've already... A couple of green cards and red cards have already stood out so far. I know we're only a pack into it. We have the Tome Trawler. So we'll get definitely set aside old good old Riku. We have the the the, the Ferrification. Fer, fer, ferocification. Derp-a-derp. Derp. Okay. 
Get a prosperity tycoon, which acts sacrifices tokens, huh? To give it un indestructible. Create some mercenaries, not too shabby. Another loan shark. Um, we have the razzle dazzle and the prickly pear. All right, another commando too. So already getting some duplicates out of pack number two or three or whatever we're in. Three, I think it was. All right, so we got the good old ox tokens. Can't go wrong with an ox. And some pyromancers. When you cast your first spell each turn, you add. So it helps you ramp into other stuff later on, which actually has some pretty good synergy with, with some cards here. And the Siphon Insight. Man, it's so hard to tell these colors of these cards. This is a multicolored card. The Transmutation Font. So always good to open up Mythics and, and Artifacts because they can, you know, do anything. So you create a Blood Token or uh, a Clue Token or a Food Token. And then you can sacrifice three artifact tokens with, with different names. Search your library for an artifact card, put it put it on the battlefield. All right, so this card actually is, it gets really, really good in Commander League because you do have time to really grind out a board state. So definitely an awesome card. Going to be going in whatever deck I, I choose. All right, so we have Marquez of the Death, the, the Dealer of Death, our second option for a commander. Whenever you commit a crime, you may pay one. If you do, look at the top two cards of the library. You have one in your hand, the other in graveyard. So again, anything that targets is going to be a good way to grind out. Um, it seems a little more boring than Riku of many paths, but again, if we have a lot of ways to commit crimes and, and eke out some value, this is value city dot commander. It's, it's pretty good here for this, this card. So two options so far, and it's also in three colors, the merging haunting. So it just turns into a three, three, the demonic ruckus, good old plot there. And we got a fairy. All right. So we'll kind of go a little bit quicker here and we'll start looking at things that, that stand out. Uh, from from these cards so otherwise this video is going to be a billion years long and i'll have lots of comments all righty so the contagion engine this is a pretty good one to, to get to with with proliferates and negative one it's like a, 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 a little board wipe so my my packs have been really good to me so far by no matter in my, no matter what i'm gonna be running contagion engine and transmutation font we have kellen the kid which is another option now for a commander and this little wanted poster. So this one has flying and lifelink. And whenever you cast a spell from anywhere other than your hand, so plotting, uh, you may cast a permanent spell with eager or lesser value from your hand without paying its mana cost. If you don't, you may put a land card from your hand on the battlefield. Another really sweet one to... And this is what's cool about Commander League is eventually you can start like building all of them. And then that's why it doesn't get stale too because it's like, well, I got this deck, I got this deck, I got this deck. Unfortunately, like these ones are all competing for different color combinations. Like these two are only for blue uh, competing. But yeah, they're all... You know, competing for green. Oh, but I guess they're they all have different different color combinations though. But yeah, so Kellen the Kid, pretty cool one too. There we go with the map, the frontier, which is just the Kodama's Reach, right? You search for two two lands, so it's definitely a really good card to to like green with the mana fixing so far, and almost all of them. I guess Marquesa doesn't use green, but um, good way to commit a crime with the hall the 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 Marauder, quick draw. All righty, so let's see here. What else do we got going on in this this mess? You can already see though, we already have a lot of duplicates from these play boosters. So typically set boosters did wonders in the past because there was such a pool of, of cards that you could get. There's list cards and things that can also spice things up. The Mage Bane Lizard, Repulse, really good card. Okay, we got the Rest in Peace, which can shut people down, I guess. Okay, so this is another option. Carebrick the Punisher. Whenever you commit a crime, exile up to one target black card from your graveyard and copy it. You may cast a copy if you do lose two life. So again, this one could be really fun later on if I'm not using like a black card pool. You can start making a deck with with Carebrick the Punisher. We have the Sandstorm Verge, huh? Stitcher. And a lot of cool little plotters that we can use with Kellen. So finding some good stuff. Here's some more mana fixing. Here's another card. This is exactly what I'm talking about the Commander League. This card would not see play in Commander because it's three mana, kind of rock. It dies to board wipes. It's not going to stick around the field. But fixing, you get a fix for three mana. Yes, absolutely. We're playing that card no matter what. No matter what deck we're running that sucker in. And we got the Patient Naturalist and an Outlaw Medic. So got some fun stuff already happening. Got a Zombie Rogue. Is that me? A zombie rogue? And throw from the saddle. Got a good old fling. That should be fun. To, the Stingerback Terror. Nice little plot thing. A little, uh, uh, definitely aggressive creature. For seven. Seven, seven if you empty your hand. And got the Cactus Shore Shot. Faking my own death. 
<laughs> so yeah, there's a good one. Whenever the creature dies, return to the battlefield. It's a good way to protect your commander. It's a and you create a treasure token. Say so kill your commander, bring it back. Yeah, these are typically these ones still see play in a lot of com- a lot of commanders like to run these type of stuffs. So uh, nice little sack outlet for the the desecrator. The tether. Okay. I'm already making a mess here, running out of space for my stuff. We got eroded canyon, canyon, good old desert. So we got the calamity galloping inferno. So it is. This one is an option too. You could choose non-legendary creature that saddled this turn, and create a attack, attacking copy of it, and sacrifice the the token at the beginning of the next end step. So again, it is an option for like a mono red kind of ag- aggressive strategy for league. And again, like I said, you can start messing around with them as as time goes on. You you keep your pool together. And as you get more cards, maybe you can actually build a deck that has enough uh, cards. By the end of League, after about six weeks of playing this, or sometimes we go a little bit longer, you actually do have a good start to a commander deck. I think I've shown it in, in some of the videos of the past of what I've come up with. And then I've actually turned some of those commanders into actual commanders like Shalab. I played Shalab from uh, Lord of the Rings. And now it's actually a commander deck I built after playing it in League. And... Yeah. All right. So we got to the the the, the beguiler already. The beguiler, lifelink. Whenever an aura you control becomes attached to an online permanent, an opponent controls with mana value less than or equal to, to that aura's mana value, gain control of that permanent. So you want bigger auras to attach to something, and then so you can use your good auras on your opponent's stuff to gain control of them. So this one's gonna be a little bit tough to make work unless we can find a bunch of auras. But super super. Uh, interesting commander to build with. So we got some options here. A Thunder Lasso. Got the Summoner. And the, is a legendary, Jolene, the Plundering Pugilist. So whenever you attack with one more creature with power for a greater, create a treasure token. And sacrifice a treasure token, it deals one damage to any target. So this is actually pretty good to put with something like Riku of Many Paths um, as a way to create some treasure tokens. But I don't know if I'd want to play it as a commander by itself. We have the Outlaw's Fury and a Desert's Duo. Good old Mirage. Again, this one's super good in command in this commander league to be able to fix. Uh, Steer Clear. Another Wolverine. That's like our third or fourth free starter commander already. And unfortunately, like I said, these suckers are going to be the duplicates I just take out of my pool so I don't have to look at them again. And quick draw. It's like our seven billion. Right down. This is a fun little card. Destroy a blocking creature and it still does damage. We have Annie joins up. Annie joins up. At, uh, enters the battlefield. Does five damage to a target creature or planeswalker opponent rows. If, tri- if triggered ability of a legendary creature control triggers, that ability triggers an additional time. Do we get Annie to actually go with it? No, we do not have this this one yet. That color combination. Good old death touch for for two mana. Again, the, uh, acts as a deterrent. Shooting the sheriff, killing some stuff. We got the Badlands Revival. That's a fun little card. And again, we'll start picking up the pace. As we have a million cards to go through. It's always always good to stop and look at these ones from the the special guest or whatever they call this slot. A fighting, decisive denial, fighting or countering. So this is a good way to actually. Uh, commit a crime by fighting. We have the the posse boss creating some good old mercenaries. Here we go. There's no legendary with Miriam. Uh, a three two uh, vehicles and mounts have hex proof. If it's your turn and whenever a vehicle you control attacks, put a plus one counter on it. Pretty aggressive for a. I mean, you got it. it these things are kind of fun to actually uh, in commander. So it is about to search your life for basically in our desert and build and put it on top. That's a good way to fix, I guess. Always look at those suckers. Probably end up playing it for now. Again, you end up utilizing your, a lot of your artifacts just for playables. And typically, you have a pretty high land count with League, uh, going up to like at least like 38 lands, I would suggest. Sometimes even more. The Essence Caster. Lots of plot cards. We have another one of those. Unfortunately, it's a duplicate. We have no legendary with the gem, Lightfoot Sky Explorer. Flying Vigilance at the end of your, uh, beginning of the intercept, you haven't cast a spell from your hand this turn, draw a card. So nice little control, little card. We've got a lot of counter spells and things that could work with it. Corrupted Conviction. The Skullduggery again. And... Not to really look about. I think we've seen most of the commons and uncommons, so let's just uh, 
Look at what we get. We get Humiliate. And the La Laughing Jasper uh, Flint. Another option. Creatures you control but don't own are mercenaries in addition to their types. I think you're upkeep. X the top X cards of target opponent's library where X the number of allies you control. Until you're going to cast spells from among those cards. And mana of any type can be spent to cast. I like this one a lot. This one I think is fun. Uh, because you get to use your um opponent's cards as a resource it's three mana comes out pretty quick you can start running all those like mana acceleration stuff to, to help you which is value city so that one should be fun to play so like what i'm looking at too is like okay so we have red red black so maybe the white blue uh uh where's the white blue green one so kellen you can actually build two decks right off the bat so right off the bat i could i could build the two decks and they wouldn't even compete with card pools so right now like I'm leaning towards those just, or like these two are just kind of duh too. They're kind of fun. So definitely, again, you have so many options, so many options already. You can see I'm not, I'm not even halfway through this box and have a lot of options to run and a lot of fun stuff that is already, uh, I can already see some combos and synergies that you never, ever would see in that trash format we call Commander. All righty. So, maybe I should quit insulting everyone's favorite thing. Hypothesizzle. And the Rattleworm, a 6-5-4 mana flasher would trample. And I don't think it's going to see standard play. Ay, ay, ay. What have we come to? So, creating some treasure tokens. The Allo Alchemist. All right. Let's go. We've seen all the uncommons and uncommons. Now, what we're really just looking at is the legendary slot here to see what else we can work with. And kind of the other, the first slot to uh, Bedevil. That works with our... With our outlaw, good old Bedevil. That's actually a good one. And a way to sacrifice some treasure tokens to draw cards. Really liking our black pool here. We have a lot of good stuff going on. And let's get to the good stuff now. Yeah, I think we've seen all the commons at this point. Typically by this set. By this 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 point in the, the set. Okay, another journey to nowhere. The uh, Matter Weaver. Whenever cast a creature spell, create a 1-1 one, one gnome artifact creature token and cre create a token that's a copy of target artifact. Dang, that's a pretty powerful card. All right, so we have another legendary with, with Bonnie Paul, the Clear Cutter. So, enters the battlefield, you create a legendary blue ox token with this creature's power and toughness equal to the number of lands you control. Whenever you attack, draw a card, then you may put a land card from your hand on the battlefield. Value. Pretty good. Pretty good. So again, we have tons of options. This is gonna be a tough one. This is gonna be a tough one to uh to decide to what to build. I'm liking like in all honesty, all of them are viable. There's like three the three two kind of aggressive ones, kind of boring. Uh, some of the monochlorid ones, I think is, I just wouldn't want to play at this point. We got a prosperity or a fell the mighty, not a prosperity. There's a board wipe. We got a board wipe in white. All right, we have Girid, Mirror of the Wilds, non-token creatures you control have. Create a token of, of, of a copy of target token you control to enter the battlefield this turn. So a great way to add some treasures and other like mercenaries and stuff. Seems pretty fun. Jeez. Yeah. How am I going to... Um, we got the Bandits Hall, which was going to go in most decks. How are we going to narrow this down to what cards I want to play with? This is going to be rough. So I can already say, like, again, usually a commander really stands out to me, but there are... There, all these seem pretty synergistic, pretty fun to play with. So, good old Coyote. Skewer the critics, huh? Pest Control, another uh, kind of like destroy tokens. Pest Control. And the the Aegis, huh? XL up to one target creature until it leaves the battlefield, and it becomes attached to a creature for as long as it remains attached. That creature becomes a copy of a creature card XL with Simulation Aegis. So, kind of kind of cool card. The Honest Rut Scene. So this one just makes your creatures cost less and enters the battlefield and you re return a creature. So again, you could use it as a commander, but it would be kind of meh. Kind of boring in my opinion. But if we're using those color combinations, it's pretty good to reduce the cost of, of creatures. I actually like this card for standard too. It's pretty fun. It's a lot, very, a lot of value here with this sucker. All righty. We have a murder. I'm, I'm really just liking my red just because we've got a lot of uh, removal spells. We have Magda. So commits a crime and create a tap treasure token. 
and you can sacrifice three treasures to create a four for a red scorpion dragon. So you can see the synergy with creating more dragons uh, with the creatures you control gain create a copy, right? Isn't that what so non-token creatures you control have creature a creature uh, create a token that's a copy of a target token you control that entered the battlefield this turn. So yeah, you can just keep chaining those tokens, correct? I'm reading that. Man, so a, a swarm of dragons with these two synergies. So already finding some cool, neat stuff. Neat, cool stuff. Oh, I thought it was a legendary for a second there. And the gold pan. You guys want to go panning for some gold? I live in the wild, wild west. They're appropriating my culture with this set. All righty. Snakeskin Veil. Collective Defiance. The Double Down. Pretty sweet for casting outlaws. Nice little mythic to, uh, to get here at knife points. Getting some more mercenaries, which works with the mercenary dude. So I'm liking that. Nice. Nice. We got some synergies. We got some synergies. Ah, oh, it's going to be rough. It's going to be rough because I, I'm leaning towards two commanders right now. I mean, this is just too juicy. This is just way too juicy of a, of a, of a combination. So, but unfortunately, they both compete for red. Return the favor. Dust Bowl. Hey, we can sacrifice not. We can sacrifice land to destroy a non-basic land. Got Tiny Bones joining up. We did not get a Tiny Bones yet. No Tiny Bones. Kapow. Let's get some more packs here. So, hope everyone's going to enjoy. I highly encourage everyone to reach out to your local game store and start a league. And if you don't have a local game store, start one of your friends. Kitchen Table Magic. That's a place to play. You don't have to rely on them if they're not going to do it. You got Rush, Rush the Dread by destroying more. Seems like there's some pretty decent board, board wipes in this um, in this uh, pool of Outlaws. I mean, we've, we've got one from the slot, the special guest slot. And someone come clean my floor up too. I've just been chucking these packs on the floor. Zach's going to kill me. Got another hindering light. Commandeer. That's a fun one to gain control of things. Do we get a double pack? Oh, yeah, because foil. We have the Honorary Tumblewag. He's very honorary. Kind of like me. What other mythics and what other uh, legendary creatures are we hoping to get out of here? See if we can get some more artifacts, too, to help our... Got another Kloss. Oh, boo, that one's a duplicate. Villainous Wealth, pretty fun card. And uh, especially late game. This is actually the last time I played Commander. I was playing one of the pre-cons. And uh, Villainous Wealth for 18 because the game went on that long after board wipe, after board wipe. And I was able to find some in combo with the cards I hit off my opponent. That was how the game ended. And that is Commander for you. But... Yep. So, next up we have a copy. We're going to copy something. Fake my own death. The Terminal Agony. There we go. Another removal spell in, on color. We have the Fortune Little Steed. This is legendary. Enter the battlefield with Scry 2, and while it's saddled, you can exile up to one creature and then return it to the battlefield. So, again, it's legendary. Maybe down the road with enough ETB stuff it could work, but probably not right now. Boombox should actually see pretty good play in this league. As it is removal, like even awkward removal is removal in Commander League. And it's fun. It's fun to have awkward removal. Super awkward removal. And they actually become very relevant. I'm telling you guys, you have to experience this, this way to play Magic the Gathering. That is my life's mission. To have people play more limited formats that um, are kind of overlooked. Like, there's too much um, Commander being played. Ooh, Greed's Gambit. And, you know, Constructing Commander, the parallel is insane. You don't get to experience the cards. You don't get to savor the flavor. Uh, Greed's Gambit. Four mana, enter the battlefield, draw three cards, gain six life, create a three, two, 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 one black creature tokens. Be your step, you discard a card, lose two life, sacrifice a creature, and leaves the battlefield, discard three cards. So this is a card you want to give to someone. So I wonder if there's any switch or Rui combos with a good old uh, Greed's Gambit. We have Akul, the Unrepentant. So this one's cool because now if I do go into the Rakdos, I could you know, play both and it's kind of swap between the commanders other than they really do different. Well, not really like going a lot of mercenaries. It would give me creatures to sack to put things into play, but there really isn't anything so far that I've seen to really ramp out. So five, five for four, kind of boring. 
Oops, wrong pile there. Kind of boring. Form a posse. And kapow. So fourth way through the box. A few more packs to go with the Savage Smath. Being able to fight, we have the Outcast Trailblazer. Man, there's a lot of ways to fix with uh, green. And the plot, I really do like the, the cast a card from anywhere card too. That one seems fun. This can be rough. I have no clue which commander I'm going to choose. We have spells you cast from your graveyard or from Mexico cost two less. Works with that card. Plotting cost two from your hand. Pretty good. And do they actually, do they, they compete for the green though, or for the red, the Riku of many paths? No, it's not the Riku. That's the module one. What's the one I'm thinking of where you cast from your hand? It's not Marquesa, right? No, I think, I think it is Kellen. Yeah, so Kellen, I think I'm still leaning towards that. Like, Kellen and the Rakdos commander, I think, is is where, where I'm uh, leaning towards. I still do like that create dragon tokens. So let me know in the comment section which one you would prefer to play if this was, was your pool. And just your overall thoughts. I really, really would like to, to hear some feedback of people actually playing this format and telling me what they think and how we can maybe even make it a little bit better in the future of what else we could do to spice things else. We have, we have draw off the flesh right. So whenever you cast a spell during your turn, other than the first spell that turn, create a 2-2 two, two blue and black zombie rogue. And whenever a zombie enters the battlefield under control, put a plus one counter on each of the zombies. So again, this actually works with our plot because we it, it's plotting allows you to cast more than one spell per turn. So there's some synergy there. I'm liking that synergy a lot from the, uh, the plot and then good old draw off. Kapow. Oh, another thing we do tend to do with this Commander League. So the one versus one league, we try to tell people to stick within Outlaws of Nether Junction. With Commander League, we allow people to buy any pack. So typically people start buying Commander Masters right off the bat because it's just high-powered cards in there that just start to synergize. And um, sometimes we have like a, a hiatus, so you can't buy them for the first couple weeks. You have to stick with Outlaws. But the problem with buying Outlaws is the commons on commons, you're going to get flooded with them. And, um, yeah, it's just not going to be able to, uh, every time you open a pack, you're not going to have as many cards that could be relevant. So we do say you can start uh, buying packs outside of Outlaws of Thunder Junction. Um, and it's kind of fun because people go crazy. Iconic Masters. Again, with my Demon Dude, maybe there's not something good to ramp from this. So you go buy, start buying some Iconic Masters. We have Roxanne, which is a good little way to fix. Unfortunately, it's not in the color combination I want it to be. This is another really good synergy with um, the one that creates tokens, like copies of tokens, because what, you end up getting a ton of meteorites? That seems pretty good. So possibly if the red, if there's not a lot of overlap between the two, I could actually run uh, that as an option. Jeez, that, that, that is now with Roxanne and with the dragon. Man, that is actually looking really, really good. We have the Violent Cacophony. Whenever you cast your, uh, your second spell each turn, you can put a pulse on the counter and draw a card. Actually not too bad of a commander. You can Voltron with this sucker pretty quick and just get value uh, from it. We have the Lively Dirge. Don't know why I'm talking about commons we've all seen. Good old Snakeskin Veil, which is a powerhouse card. Alrighty, we have the Spirit. Another Savage Smash. We'd be savagely smashing things. We got the Smuggler Surprise. There's a, a, a modal card. Good old modal card to give things indestructible. And do we even see many list cards at all? Have I... I can't remember opening up any list cards yet from this. Or I just didn't uh, notice it. But, I mean, it's opened up a Lord of the Rings set booster for another uh, video for another channel. And there were so many list cards in it. Back for more. That's a cool reanimation spell. Ooh, we got Faraska. So whenever a non-token creature and opponent controls dies, you may pay one. If you do return that card uh, to the battlefield tapped under your control, it's a treasure artifact with sacrifice add. But you still get any static effects, I believe, and any ETB effects. Right? I'm reading that correctly. So really cool card. Good old 3-3 Death Toucher. Oh, wow. More options. Too many options. See, you, there's so much gameplay. From this one box, there are so many commander decks you can start to build. So many trash cards that you have to kind of mix and match and figure out what works. This is a fun format. We have Urtha. Uh, creates a mercenary. 
Works with the token generating thing. Whenever you activate an ability that targets a creature or player, copy that ability. You may choose new targets. Wow. Oh, boy. It's going to give me... I'm just going to be so heartbroken by not being able to play all of these commander decks um, here. Because, again, all of them seem to be pretty fun. What I like about this set, too, is it seems like most of these make bad cards good. Like duplicating targets of things, like uh, activate ability that targets a creature player. Yeah, there's lots of activations in here from a lot of these cards that I could see that actually working well. The Tornado. Alrighty. Oh, we got the Lotus Ring. Equip creature gets plus three plus three and has vision. So now I need to buy, uh, I need to try to buy Kaldheim and um, uh, Wild Zil or Eldraine, Throne of Eldraine, so I can get the, the three card infinite combo with the Lotus Ring. So I actually think it's not that bad right now for fixing. You can actually make a lot of your mercenaries end up being able to sack and, and if they're three threes anyway, it's pretty decent. We have the Insatiable Avarice. And we have Baron Bertram, the Greywater. So when one or more tokens enter the battle for your control, you create a 1-1 black vampire rogue creature with lifelink. And then you can sacrifice another creature or artifact. Oh man, the synergy. I mean, the, it's just value. I could actually see, I could actually see just running this dude as it's 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 good value. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm gonna have to maybe a dartboard, just put them all up on a dartboard and throw a dart to see which one I'd I'd win. The one with the hole in it is the one that I'd play as a commander. Oh, I don't know. I want to play them all. So maybe I'll have to look at some of the other cards that I got in here to see exactly what I'm going to do. we got that another Buried in the Garden. The Key to the Vault. Really, really powerful card. Super powerful card. For Yeah, we got the Lava Spur Boots, too. Nice. You'd want to see. So that's typically, like, you get most of the uncommons from this set by opening up a, a set booster. Or a, a play booster. No more set boosters here. So I throw one on the ground. And... Why'd I throw that on the ground? Um, we have the Anguish Unmaking that worked with our one of our last cards. Pretty powerful card as far as a, a removal spell. On last job, we got um, a modal card again. And we have tons of gardeners. Tons of gardeners. Three packs to go. Four packs to go. There was one hiding there. Get rid of this box. Throw it on the ground. We have a dinosaur. That's not a dragon. Decisive denial. Step between worlds. Any more legendaries left for us to? Hopefully not. Let's not. Let's not open up any more legendaries because I'm already having an aneurysm by trying to figure out which one I want to play. Because there are some goodies. There are some absolute goodies in here. The vampire rogue token. Is that a sign? Do I have to play that? Because that's a sign. Uh. Primal Command, that's a fun card. It's actually a fun card, Commander, the Primal Command. Dang. We have a Satoru, the Infiltrator. Uh, whenever a Satoru, the Infiltrator, and one or more other non-token creatures enter the battlefield under your control, if none of them are cast or no mana was spent to cast them, draw a card. Okay, so it works with after, because this one you can't plot by itself. But it's working, of course, with plot and other ways to cheat them in. So this one might be a little rough to try to make work. Um, there was a lot of reanimation spells, but they tend to be with green in this. We have another uh, Calamity Galloping Inferno. Unfortunately, it's going to be a duplicate. And there's another one of the um, mentors. And trick shot. All right. Second to last pack, we've got the treasure token. And a Void Rend by countering. A, uh, can't, uh, you can destroy it on that permanent. In the Esper colors, and oh, I thought it was Esper for a second. We have Obeka, Splitter of Seconds. Whenever spl a Splitter of Seconds deals common damage to player, you may you get that many additional upkeep steps after this phase. So uh, you want to pump this up and get a lot of upkeep phases if you have things that work with upkeeps. But so far, I didn't see a lot of cards. So, again, this would be a fun card outside of League, but it would take a lot of building uh, to make this sucker work. So, and then we have Lazav, Familiar stra uh, strang Stranger. Whenever you commit a comedy, plus one, plus one counter on it, then you may exile car a card from a graveyard. Uh, if a creature card exiled this way, you may have Lazav become a copy. So, kind of neat, but you need to mill your opponent 
and find some biggies to make it work. Uh, again, though, this is like like a league with a, with a deep pool. You'll start seeing other players play these cards. Like when we had like eight players playing this, we we all tried to play different ones, um, and it was kind of fun to see what the concepts of what people came up with. So last pack, hopefully not the least pack. We have the Tyrant Scorn. Now that makes me want to. Oh, that, that one doesn't mill. It just destroy stuff or return stuff. Concealed courtyard, the bad, the inexpensive land, and we have Bruce. Uh, Tarl Roving uh, Rancher. So Oxen, you have double strike, and whoever enters the battlefield or attacks, that's the top card of your library. If it's a land card, create a 2-2 two -two white ox. Otherwise, you may cast it until the end of next turn. It's a nice little value Boros card. Not too shabby. I wouldn't fault anyone from running that as their commander. And we have Vile Smasher. Whenever an outlaw enters the battlefield, works with outlaws. Now, okay, okay, this is a sign. This is a sign I gotta go outlaws. We gotta go rack those outlaws. That'll be the first deck I build. We'll have to see what my second one is. Probably one that doesn't compete with red or black. But as our card pool gets deeper and deeper, we can start to... to uh, typically, when we play these leagues, I end up with like four or five commander decks. And we'll bust out commander games like one after another. Because in this league, it's not like the other league where you can only play one per person per week. You can just find a pod and play. And, you know, grind out some lost points and grind out some points. And it's, it's so fun to watch your card pool grow. It, it makes me think of, a, of being a kid again, where I had a limited card pool. And these were the cards I had to work with. And that's it. And whenever you got a new pack for an allowance or a Christmas uh, a present or you mowed lawns to earn some money to, to buy some booster packs, you get these new exciting cards that you can actually put in your deck and you're so excited to play again. That's what it feels like again. And when you're an adult, especially one that owns a game store, and I literally have access to every magic card of my heart's desire... It makes it kind of boring. Like sometimes having less options is more options. And unfortunately with magic where things have been pushed to the extremes of, you know, power level. And it's just these, 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 uh, man, let's just think of these synergies in here that we're going to have, that we're going to play. And I don't know why I'm trying so hard to convince you people that I'm never going to, uh, see in real life or whatnot, but I, I, I hope you find this video kind of enjoyable and you do give it a go. If you tell your game stores, about this and, and ask them to run a league. This is a fun, fun experience. Two thumbs up for me uh, for this this type of thing. And it's the only way I will play Commander. Like, I can play Commander once. I, I've given everyone one time a month. I will play Commander. We have Commanders on Mondays. We have Commander on, on uh, Wednesdays. We have Commander on Thursdays. We have Commanders on Saturday. The only two days we don't have Commander at here at our store with packed tables is Tuesday for board game night because that's board game night. And then Friday, we're still trying to get like some sort of constructed Friday magic that never fires. So like, so Monday we had, I think we had, yeah, we had all tables being played. Right now it's packed in there. Like I said, I went back there to ask if people want to do Commander League. And like, now nah, I want to play regular Commander. But hopefully I can go back and, and uh, convince a few of them to, I know I, I have three players already signed up uh, for Commander League. And maybe we can get Grumpy Zach to actually build a Commander deck and quit whining about everything and he'll actually play with us and he can be miserable playing commander because everyone gangs up on him blah 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 anyway hope you guys enjoyed this video this one kevin with what am i on what channel i'm on rogue deck builder thanks for watching